to this um, Samish Town Council Planning Committee meeting um, on uh, item number one. I have um, apologies for absence received, please, Councillor. Yes, thank you. Councillor Fortescue, we had um, a social event that you planned for some time ago. Item number two, did we have any declarations of interest from any members of the committee? Mm. Oh, um, I'm not sure if it's a pecuniary interest, but on the schoolhouse. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. What's that? Um, as previously, I should declare that my partner is a TA at the school. So her employment ends next week. And we best just record that just for safe being. Thank you. Yeah. So. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any more declarations at all? Um, Labours on the so any of the applications, that's good. So okay then. And then um item number three, we have the minutes of the previous planning meeting which is attachment one. And I hope you've all read those, okay. Um, did we have any matters arising from those at all? Yes. yes. Um, not specifically from those, but from previous meeting minutes. Um, a sort of procedural thing first, I don't know whether it's council friend or the clerk that can answer, but we objected a while ago to the Juliet balcony in uh, Stam Street, and that went to a single planning officer to make the decision. Subsequently, a far less controversial item was seats outside the bakery, and that went to full planning. How is it decided what goes to full planning and what goes to an individual officer? So the, the tables and chairs um, went to um, no the um, it wasn't no, it was regulatory. regulatory yes yeah. that went to regulatory um, and um, the items only go to committee of planning if they receive six or more material planning considerations in objection or support or if a member calls it in with legitimate material planning considerations. Right. Otherwise, okay. if it doesn't reach that threshold, then it gets decided by officers. Okay. Which I think it's 90 or percent of planning applications get decided by officers. Okay, it's thank you. It's the most controversial or um, ones that go to that level. I must have misunderstood what you said. Sorry about that. Um, the other thing is the uh, aqua bar. We were due to have some follow-up on that. Councillor Murray put forward a proposal that was backed up about investigating the ponds and various other things. Where are we with that, please? I'm not sure. I don't know. What was that in relation to? What was, was there a problem with it? Was there? Well, you may remember that there was a group that objected strongly, saying that the ponds that were going to be built on or ignored. That oh, are you talking about the aqua park? Sorry, yes, yes, yes that part. Uh, I don't know. The, it was uh, the, the our comments were made. I think our comments and recommendations were made was to approve it with the comments that we made. Oh, that's all I've heard so far. I haven't heard anything else back from BBC or anything. So. But you did propose some investigation, didn't you? That yes. Would clarify. Yes. Tonight. So we, so me and uh, me and Councillor Malik was going to go and speak to the the owners at the at the Aqua Park. However. I have been completely stalked with work at night, so I've been unable to attend at the moment, but it is in the pipeline. So it will happen? Yes, it will happen. Please okay. go ahead and speak to him, yeah. So if that's been delegated to Councillor yeah, Marine, I will go. I will follow see. that up with Councillor Malik, are you? Yeah, I'll go to Councillor Vars? Yeah, item in the minutes P06236, uh, 1 Potter Street. I recall this is the ex-solicitor's um, building, which is now up for auction. 
and it was resolved that um, the town clerk should speak to the planning officer about trying to find out the, the reasons for that granting the planning permission for the whole building being converted to residential. Oh, that's the, uh, right. Yeah, I do remember that. The policy is that we should try and retain. That's right, because it is. It's yeah, yeah, it was commercial it's previously, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 So um, I haven't got to that action. I must confess, um, but it is on my list to, to get to. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Very much. We're very bad at so. <laughs> so um, apart from those uh, those points that we've picked up. Did I have somebody to propose and second the minutes, please? So, Councillor Perry, tell me, Councillor Wiles. Thank you very much. Yeah. And all those in favour? Item number four, public participation. A 15 minute session is set aside for members of the public to make representations at the meeting in respect of the business on the agenda. Individual representations should not exceed three minutes. Written notice of the desire to exercise the right to speak together with the topic to be addressed must be given to the interim town clerk prior to 9 a.m. on the Monday preceding the meeting. Do we have any um, public participation? No requests, Chair. No requests at all. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you very much. On that one. And then um, item number five, planning applications. And this is the application plans and papers can be viewed via the Doe District Council website. And the first item is planning application reference number 23. Uh, forward slash zero zero seven double five and two three slash zero zero seven five six. Proposal seven five five is formation of rear vehicular access, parking rear wall and gate insertion of two roof lights, replacement windows and doors and roof covering. And seven five six, <coughs> pardon me is um, internal works including ground floor alterations to living room, fireplace including replacement bessemer beam, removal of wainscot panels, half removal of kitchen partition, removal of kitchen fireplace insert, first floor is insert new opening and partitions to form a boiler cupboard in the rear bedroom and to repair the spine beam to the rear bedroom. Remove and insert new wall linings, incorporating party wall upgrades. Second floor is to include remove and insert new roof tiles, insert partition, insulate and line the attic between the rafters to form a park habitable space. The external works include re-roof, insertion of two number roof lights, replace two number rear elevation windows, one number door and part remove the rear boundary wall. Location um, 15 Church Street, St Mary's, Sandwich CT 13 9HL. Uh, Councillor Morehouse. Uh, yeah, I feel that we should strongly support this. The number 13, which is next door, which was at one time a school shop and then became Charming Queen's residence, had extensive work done to it about three years ago. So this would be consistent. That. Indeed it will, and anybody that's seen the, uh, the uh, photographs and diagrams will see that it's in dire need of quite a lot of um, repair and attention. Also, I'm just picking up or noting things that I've said before I come to uh, Mr Hennessy, and uh, Kent Highways gave the agreement to it. It's also including additional parking, off-road parking, which in that area is really, really essential. And um, as I said, the refurbishment of the property will be will hopefully bring it back to uh, a better condition than it was before. Mr. Hennessy, this property I think is the last one in the row of cottages to be refurbished. Uh, many of the others have already got um, off-street parking in the back going onto the school road. 
Um, this was in a dire situation when I saw it, um, actually almost dilapidated. So I think they're bringing it back and um, that will bring that whole row of cottages um, into line and, and there's a great improvement for the area. Indeed. And also, it's going to get another car off the streets. Exactly, that's the most important thing of all, so it's the parking there. So that's excellent. So we have a proposal from Councillor Morehouse. Do we have a second left for this proposal? Uh, Councillor Morehouse, that's right. And all those in favour? <laughs> we strongly support. Yes, strongly support. Oh, oh yes, yeah, sorry, strongly support the, uh, the recommendation for those works to go ahead, indeed. Reference number 23 forward slash 00775. And this is a proposal for the erection of a single story rear extension, location 21 St George's Road, Sandwich CT 13 9LF. Uh, did we have anybody that needed to raise any issues on this at all? Just to say That's some more perhaps. reports for the Immotimus uh, application. It's not it's, um, yeah, basically, it's, it's to put a very large kitchen dining on the rear, doesn't it? And being a single store, it doesn't overlook anybody else's property. So uh, hopefully it's not any, any controversy with anybody at all there. So you're recommending approval of support. this? Strongly support. Strongly support. We don't, we, we don't need approval of anything else, do we? No, no, no indeed not. not. Did you have a seconder for your uh, recommendation? That's the Mars. Thank you very much. All those in favour? I should be saying any against, actually, but is there any against? No? Thank you very much. And um, the next item is planning application reference number 2300828. And this is a proposal for the erection of a single storey rear extension existing extension to be demolished location 23 sandwood road sandwich ct 13 0 a q that's the more house yeah as with, as, with, as with the last application yeah it's an innocuous uh, application for no reason to reject so strongly support strongly support that one and my notes had on this one that it was not overlooking anything. Um, covers over existing patio areas, so it's not taking up any of the garden or anything, is it? It's a family dining room utility room, which is a dire need, I should imagine. So, and did we have a seconder for Councillor Hunt? Councillor Pennington, thank you. And all those in favour? And, and any against? No. And planning application reference number 23 uh, forward slash 00887. And this is erection of partitions, blocking of existing openings, and creation of new openings to form staff facilities. Location Bell Hotel, 1 Upper Strand Street Sandwich, CT 139 EF. Councillor Morehouse. Significant employer. Investment in the Bell Hotel, strongly support. Oh, brilliant, that's good news. And Councillor Wiles? Uh, yeah, I support it, but the, uh, the fire and rescue corridors, the 30 minute fire door should be fitted at the top. Exactly. And the bottom of the basement, that's the floor of the basement. And I couldn't see that on the plan. No. Unless I'm missing something. That's right, no, no, I did, no, I did pick that up myself because. Because obviously the staff accommodation is in is in the basement. The changing room is in the basement, and the staff accommodation, I guess, for uh, like a, a night quarter or something, is, is on the first floor with a change of, of access to the doors. So, um, should we perhaps include that in our recommendation? Yeah, support, but subject to confirmation that the KCC, so the fire and rescue care, the yeah, comments have been um, taken on board. FRS, yeah, recommendations. 
Is that okay with you, Pastor? Yes, yeah, so so. And you seconding Councillor Pennington is seconding that? Yes. Indeed. Did you have any comments like Councillor Pennington? No, no, I uh, uh, support you know, to improve the staff facilities. As Council of Warhouse was saying, it's a major employee employer in the town and uh, uh, I think if they want to do, do this this really something we should welcome. Indeed, absolutely. Yeah. Is there any other comments at all? Right. Okay, well, we've had a proposal to strongly support this and a seconder. All those in favour? Thank you very much. And any against? And then um, planning application reference number 23 forward slash 00852. And this is a proposal for the erection of a frame mounted dust extraction system retrospective application. Location Sandwich Industrial Estate, Building Number Three, Ramsgate Road, Sandwich, CT One Three Nine L Y. And um, do we have any comments on this at all, Councillor Morehouse? Again, uh, quite an important uh, employer because they manufacture bespoke systems for um, uh, takeaway units in these motorway service stations, etc. So again, strongly support. To all the business that we need around here. Indeed. And I believe from my own comments are that this is obviously a, a health and safety feature because yeah. if it's dust, dust extraction, I'm not quite sure why they didn't have this before. And although it's a retrospective application, I think this is essential to maintain the health of the workers in this in this unit there. So did you have a comment? It is a big um, thing, <laughs> but I don't think it's out keeping the no, no. The size of the building generally. I did go on to Google Maps myself to see the location of it, but it seems to be it's, it's seems right. to have it's other commercial right. properties around it. It's, right. it's opposite the Crystal Business Centre. Indeed, yeah. So, so I this, don't think it'd be a nice. This thing. is a retrospective yeah. application, anyway. So it's already there. Mm -hmm. so. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But we we could still we could still say that we didn't want it. If, if yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so don't so. I agree with Councillor Morehouse. It's out of the way. No one's going to see it. It's not in residential area, and it's businesses that we need for the town. Indeed, that's good. So, and, and did you have a second there, Councillor Morehouse? I second it. Mm -hmm. oh, Councillor Green. Yeah. There we go. And all those in favour? Any against? And planning application reference number 23 forward slash 00710. Uh, proposal prior approval for the change of use from the nursery to residential dwelling. And this is location schoolhouse nursery, school road sandwich, CT139 HT. And I just want to make an initial comment is um, after some um, difficulty in getting in touch with the new owner. I have actually made a site visit and met the new owner of this property and I'll be reporting back um, to uh, full council about this but basically the property has been bought as a residential property for a family member so um, any worries or concerns about it being rented out or being Airbnb or anything like that are totally unfounded and so um, the gentleman's bought the property and it's it's literally for family to live in so uh, i'll give you that does anybody else have any comments to talk about this uh, council Marie? yeah before this was before this was bought by the gentleman the gentleman obviously bought it at auction there was a was there was supposed to be a conversation between the the gentleman and the school about the school leasing the building did, did that take place it did it did yeah sorry yeah i can update on that so when i met the the new owner he said that he had spoken with a Mrs. Bennett <coughs> and um, the school said that although it had been empty for six years and um, they didn't realise that they had the opportunity to buy the property and um, although they didn't have the money for it, they did, uh, uh, what is it called? A crowd raising fund? Crowd fund. Crowd fund, crowd fund yeah. raising thing which gathered um, £300 and um, unfortunately it went for a much larger sum than yes. £300. And um, the gentleman said that the auction was just um, 
something that he had attended and the property had come up and it was just uh, an opportunity to move a family member into the town because he lives in the town and he's a dedicated resident of the town and he just needs to move his family member closer to him so but he said it was available for anybody i think there was um, four other bidders at the auction and um, he was just the one that happened to get it so but his pure intention is 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 that his family will be moving into the property and he said after thereafter um, if the property comes up again after that family member uh, moves on then he will be moving into it himself because he loves the property so much um, he's hoping to um, try and put back a lot of the original features so unfortunately KCC left it to rack and ruin and they didn't maintain it despite being in the conservation area so a lot of the guttering and the pipes are not the original cast iron ones but they're actually UPVC plastic ones and there are UPVC doors and windows on the property which obviously shouldn't have permission but didn't have so um, but the, the neighbours in the locality all come and uh, congratulated him on, on putting the property back into a, a good state of repair so um, so yeah it's quite important now so Perhaps to ask if you have any questions. I, mean, I, I, I hear what you're saying about what his intentions are, but I don't think those are material to a planning application because an applicant can say anything to anyone. It's Indeed, it's only, they can. It's only when things are in black and white that we Indeed. see the colour of their eyes, so to speak. Indeed. I think the other issue with this property is the there is a potential safeguarding issue because it's overlooking. That's right. Uh, He's already spoken to the school around. about that and the, the windows on the rear of the property that don't actually overlook because the, and I, I checked this out myself, where the property looks out towards the playground, the trees have been left to rack and ruin and they completely obliterate. So when you're inside the property, you can't actually see into the playground at all. Um, but he did say he's having the rear windows obscured so there would be obscure panes in the rear windows, he said, um, because of, of that, that safeguarding reason. So, but as I say, he's had a full discussion with the head teacher of the infant school, and um, there's been discourse on, on what needed to be done. The, the school's had an opportunity to comment on the planning portal. Indeed, indeed they have and, uh, and they they were at liberty if they had been able to to actually go to the auction and, and yeah. buy the property as well so, uh, we try. so um so did i have a proposal yeah. 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 Um, yeah if members are minded to uh, make a proposal to support the application mm -hmm. you might consider a con requesting a condition that any of the overlooking uh, windows be maintained with um, a privacy, um, privacy type of glass, the, um, I can't remember the word for it. Indeed, indeed, yeah, if you wanted to, as, as Councillor Friend said, you can make that condition of the application. Councillor Pennington. Yes, thank you. I was uh, a bit interested and a bit surprised to see that um, it had been residential previously, uh, but it was going back to that use um, rather, than, uh, rather than a major change in the structure, uh, which I, I thought was uh, that's, that's right. Yeah, so yeah, as I say, previously it was, was residential, and the inside has, has only, you can see how it's just been very cheaply and quite nastily actually because some of the original features were damaged and obscured but it was just literally boarded out to make it a nursery school um, but once all the boarding and the cheap things to obscure the fireplace and all that taken back out it could be returned to a residential property quite quite easily i should imagine so i just wonder if it's right to put in a attempts to put in a condition to obscure glass when there are so many properties overlooking playgrounds. 
Do you want the mold to fix your brush and are we good. assuming everybody is at the Good question. Yeah, good question, yeah. That'd be for the committee to decide upon. So, mm -hmm. so, so uh, do I have a proposal for this application at all? To go from um, nursery to residential? Okay. My, 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 feeling, my feeling is the fact that, like some of us councillors here, we really don't like a business or a, 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 or a, a community use building being turned into a dwelling shops at the moment. We've seen quite a few go in the last few years in town. It really grinds my gears when they go and they turn into houses. Um, yeah, it's, my, that's, that's it's not actually thing. within the area of, of the commercial, um, the commercial designated area. It still was a community use up. building that's now being turned into, into a it, it wasn't actually community use, it was a private nursery. Yeah, it's community use, because the community it's, use that has it as a nursery, yeah, so it's still it community a, use. It was a private business, but I'll take your yeah, 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 friend. It was a private business, and uh, you know, there's obviously a lot of sense of feeling about this application and the history of it and what it might be used for. But the committee does not have to come to a determination whether they support or oppose it. They could choose to, you could choose to make no comment. Yeah. Well, I'd like to um, make a proposal as, as chair of this committee. I'd like to propose that this does go across because it will stop the um, deterioration of this building and the neighbours who I spoke to in the street who said they're hoping it will stop the rats. But apparently there was a lot of vermin and rats that were uh, coming out of the property. So. Um, I would like to put a proposal forward that this building is uh, returned to its original state and that the, the degradation that Kent County Council left it in for six years is returns it to its original Victorian state. So that's the proposal I'd like to put forward. I mean, was it ever a, a residential property or was it all, only residential for the school? It, it, it was residential for the school. Yeah. Had a school. It's never been a private residential. So, it's your headmaster's. 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 Yeah. 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 headmasters yeah. yeah. Property. But it's this is our opportunity for it to be um, yeah. put to you know put back to how it should be, and um, or to, to leave it to decay and, and not be used. So it's it's up to you, Councillor Pennington. I'll second that. I'll so I think that's the right approach. It just gets another property in. I mean, I'm sure the district council would like to see another residential property, so it's another one we could tick off from our quota for the sandwich instead of somebody building something new, so which is quite useful. So that's been proposed and seconded, and all those in favour of that proposal? So. Two. And those against that proposal? Against, against. So, 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 okay. Yeah. Vote against before it's yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. And so um, we've got to make a decision on that. Cast, so, so, casting vote. So, casting vote. So I know. Oh, Mister Mayor. Oh, <laughs> should I be Mister Controversy? And I think I will be Mister Controversy because I believe this property needs to be put back into its rightful position and, and refurbished as it should have been before. And if this property doesn't get this uh, planning permission, um, the current owner said that it would just continue to decay. Can we use your second vote to abstain and that's a perfect rule. <laughs> <laughs> Too late, I've made my decision already. So, so my um, is to vote for the proposal. <laughs> <coughs> what a piece of power. <laughs> oh gosh, my head's swelling. <laughs> okay then, item number six, planning decisions. And this was to um, receive a note, latest decisions taken by Dover District Council on new planning applications. And then um, there's obviously a list of applications there, um, most of which have been given Permission, so I would like to um, note this the applications that have been given permission by the District Council. 
Do I have a seconder for that? No. To note that. All those in favour of noting those? Okay. That's good. Um, item number seven, street furniture applications. So receive and consider any applications made to DDC in relation to a street furniture consent application under the Local Government Miscellaneous Provisions Act 1982. And I believe we have none. None, no. Item number eight, licensing, to consider any licensing notices and issues received from Dover District Council. Please note, none to consider at the time of issuing this agenda. Okay. Item number nine, enforcement, to consider any enforcement notices and issues received from Dover District Council. Please note, none to consider at the time of issuing this agenda. Item number 10, correspondence, to receive and consider correspondence relating to planning matters, including notification of appeals against refusal of planning applications, none received at the time of issuing this application. Have we received any? No. no. So there's none to consider. Thank you very much, Councillor. Item number 11, verbal update from our third district councillors on matters relating to planning. Um, I believe, I'm not sure who went last time, so I was going to ask Councillor Morehouse to start off. If that's well, right. I, think, I think that's the last planning meeting. No, so uh, indeed, I'd like you to. Tomorrow uh, is the um, planning application where the application for gas and parking will go. Right, I see. And is that an open public meeting? It is indeed. Right, so, anybody that's got an interest in the um, in the application for was that a hotel and a spa? Yes, <coughs> Thank you very much. That what time would that be starting at? Yeah. Six PM. Thank you very much. Okay, that's very good. Councillor Friend, did you have any updates yeah. on planning or enforcement for us? No updates. Um, but there is uh, obviously everyone knows that there was a tables and chairs licensing request by the market in um, for the beautiful forecourt which was accepted. Um, a few residents have contacted me concerned that they are using that and whether they actually have an agreement with Sandwich Town Council as the um, lessee for the land for them to actually be able to use it because I haven't seen anything. Oh, now this came up at a previous meeting didn't it? It came up at the Heritage on Monday. Well, it came up on Monday as well, did it? Well, it also came up to Pomni and um, Full Town Council, yeah. and I remember we discussed it, and as far as I was concerned, it was deferred. I thought it was deferred until the forecourt was going to be completed. If I may, Councillor Mr. Mayor, thank you. Mm -hmm. so, the, so last year, the, the previous landlady put in an application for tables and chairs to go on the square. This was the old square, not the new square. So, which was agreed, and Shepherds knew who owned the who owned the building, who owned the property, who owned the business. They were going to give specialised chairs and tables and a ring fence around for people to sit on the square and to turn it into a cafe culture that we want. However, things have changed. There's now a new landlady, so they have to put in a new application for in their name. Also, the fact that the square is now brand new is totally different plans to the original to the old style beautiful forecourt. So they need to put in for those new plans as well. That's what that's what I that's what I know uh, currently. However, they have been putting their gentle tables out over the last course of a couple of months, couple of weeks. They have been putting out the front, which is causing a problem for disabled people outside the front of their built, which has been dealt with by DDC. And now they've been putting out site on the square. So, uh, which was brought up on Monday. However, they I do believe that they need to be spoken to again. Say, look, if they want it, they have to put out a new application in for like a two license. Yeah, I mean, the thing to know, especially for the you guys at Sandwich Town Council, is although they have a license to be able to put tables and chairs out, they need permission from, from the, the landowner to use it. And obviously, come to a commercial type of agreement, they're mm -hmm. using it at the moment and using it free of charge. They're assuming that the granting of the table and chairs license gives them permission. It doesn't. And I do believe the last, the last administration before the election and the, the previous. Uh, the previous chief executive, they gave permission for them to use that, but that everything seems to change. Yeah, of course it has. Yeah. Just in terms of the other issues that were um, that have been raised by Councillor Marie, um, obviously that has been through 
and licensing and those issues have been dealt with. Well, oh, super. Thank you very much for that update on that council fund. Uh, council Wiles? Yeah, in addition to that, there's a couple of A boards that popped up mm -hmm. in the market in the Samrook shop, um, which, again, assuming you don't have permission, but I'm just wondering who within STC should be uh, enforcing that and talking to the landlady. Because that comes under the Kent County Council yeah. A boards. Um, no, not on. Oh, not on the forecourt. Oh, yeah. It's, it's only okay. adjacent to the highway that comes under the kitchen. Um, just for the A board requirements as well, we've had this discussion at town meeting for many years. Uh, yes. yes. um, over COVID, KCC changed the requirements for A board licensing. They used to have to go through a lot more stringent process and do lots of proof and recording, whereas now they need to just fill out a form that relies on good faith that they tick a box to say they have got everything they need to do, they don't have to prove it, and they send a copy of that off to KCC. So, we have the four core A boards are the responsibility of you guys. Right, so can I just sum up on this? So first of all, we need to know who these A boards belong to, and so that they're reported to the town clerk. So if anybody's got any information. Salmon shop, and they, they've written on them. Salmon well, shop, yeah, and market yeah. 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 I'm getting old now, so I don't, I don't see things and stuff all over them. So, yeah. Okay, so that was um, Sound Shop and what was the sound? The market in. And the market yeah. in. So. And also, could I ask um, if the town clerk could perhaps find out just to make sure about the agreement with the market in? Yes. And then, if necessary, um, I'm quite prepared to go and see the new landlords or landlady or whoever is there and mention this to them necessary and if, if it doesn't improve then I myself and a few people in this room also know we've got another contact that's yet with Neen that we could yeah. call upon to uh, sort that out. I do, uh, Mr. Bender, it's one thing, I do feel that if we don't start dealing with the ables as soon as possible oh, it would get to exactly the same it was before the previous, the previous square where they're just littered everywhere all over, the, all over the zone place and stuff. We have been calling for a labelled audit with the sound team for about two years now, so it still hasn't materialised with KCC, so we'll just keep pushing and pushing. Oh, indeed. No, no, I'll make sure that gets addressed. This is some I just wonder if the arrangements have changed for the ABOR due to the pandemic. Is there any plan to revert back to the old application, or can we push for that so that it's not quite so even? Yeah, that would be dependent um, on Kent County Council. Yeah, I mean, uh, we could, but I think we're, we're all well aware of the current state of finances at Kent County Council <laughs> and their uh, willingness to, you know, put extra resource and staff in to deal with that. That was probably part of some internal restructure to relieve themselves of some workload that freed up some space. That, that, that doesn't make it right. Um, and obviously the ABLE requirements haven't actually changed, it's just the reporting of it. So you still can only place an A-board within the purview of your property and outside. So even if that was KCC, even if the forecourt was KCC owned, you wouldn't be able to place it on the road and still comply with the rules on A-boards. Um, I will get this looked into though, this is some papers, and the town clerk can perhaps look into what the arrangements are on the A boards because before um, myself or the town clerk or any other member of this council goes to visit, and please can I make sure that nobody um, <laughs> makes surprise visits, please, to any of these premises. Um, it's got to be done on the auspices of the town clerk um, that we will look into that and, and then we will take that up as to calling them into question. But we need to make sure we get the legally correct. So we cancel the laws for service. And subject to that being clarified, Mr. May, can I suggest you put on your chain of office and return the A boards to the businesses <laughs> concerned? Just the respective owners, if you just on that, Mr. Mayor, there was a, a group meeting between councillors across Kent, and one of the, uh, this Kent put one of them, and uh, someone went round in a van collecting all the A boards and then took them back and required them to pay a £20 bounty to give it oh, to, to retrieve it. I, mean, I don't think that would stand up or be legal. No, no, I was going to say, I, I perhaps won't go, I won't go in that, that manner. On your push bike, Mr. Mayor. On my push bike, indeed. Thank you. Uh, so, Councillor Pennington. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just want to say that I think the businesses uh, around the fourth quarter have had a lot to put up with uh, yeah. over the last few months, and we might take that into account, but 
past the message gently that you know business is now returning to normal and that the normal rules will, will be applied. Indeed, that's correct. Thank you for that. And as I say, when once we've got clarification on the rules and regulation, both the A boards and the tables and chairs, then myself and the town clerk will undertake to uh, bring those people to bear so that they're not flouting any laws or regulations. So, and as was said, um, Samish Town Council is the VC, so they would have to approach us uh, with a new application there. I mean, it may have been. Sorry, go on, Councillor Myers. Perhaps in their signage, welcome to Sandwich. Capital, maybe the capital of East County. <laughs> I was I was going to suggest that we we could we could put it as part of the terms and conditions for the Guildford Square part of working groups um, works that they're doing. If if that's if the town clerk thinks that's a, a good thing to do. Or Indeed, we've got the working group. Yeah. Yeah. Four, four called working group. Yeah, that's a good idea. We could yeah. pay that forward to that. Yeah. And if anybody has any other um, further comments, and um, I. Sorry, this is a, a separate thing because um, I thought the clerk was going to mention it. Um, I made an error in suggesting that the toll bridge had put out extra tables and chairs. But the town clerk kindly clarified that it's actually the Crispin and they do have permission. Yeah. So I just wanted to acknowledge that for anyone who yeah. Thank you for making that, uh, that update, that recommendation. Item number 12 is date of the next meeting. Planning committee meeting will be the 9th of August 2023. Thank you very much for your cooperation and support this evening. Have a pleasant evening.